Hello. <laughs> wow. Welcome. Oh, another marvelous episode. Of we have no mouth and we don't really want to scream, so it's fine. I'm dying inside. <laughs> Do I have all my head? Yeah, I have all yep. my head. Ooh. Uh, mm. <laughs> mm, but my hair. Mm. There we go. There we go. All right. So, um, hello, interwebs. Welcome. Uncomfortably close to us, but yet so far away from us. <laughs> In mm. our basement. <laughs> Yep, on yet another episode of The Average Chat, where this time we thought we'd do things a bit differently because we've been talking about things which are very materialistic. Items. <laughs> yeah. So, things. Because uh, this time we didn't receive a little meta job to do and review items. We thought we'd bring uh, back mm, some of our earlier opinions, which we'd begun discussing. And we promised to do a more in-depth book. And now that the book's out and we managed to get our hands on it, because we were fucking lazy, not any other way around it, we finally want to talk about Pathfinder. Now, it's a big discussion, so we're definitely not going to be done today. I'm going to do this. Mm. Mm. Oh, no. I'm short again. All right. I'm, I'm okay again. <laughs> yeah, fair. So, uh, for those of you joining us right now, good, we just started, so you're not that late, but we are, we're sorry. Pathfinder 2. Basically. So, uh, before we begin, let me preface this with, um, it's going to be a very biased look. Yeah, you love it, I don't know it. So, yeah, basically, basically. Um, for me, it's my first rpg love didn't even start on 3.5 just started on pathfinder so uh, i'll always have a soft spot and for you this is completely fresh it's completely new i mean i've read about the rules a bit and some differences to mm -hmm. 5e yeah but i've only played 5e yeah. now for me this is so biased that even when i describe D, &D scenes to my players i imagine the graphics looking like this so uh, i guess uh, i'm i'm the zoomer and you're the boomer at that <laughs> Pretty fucking much, yeah. <laughs> but luckily, the the boominess of Pathfinder caught up to us, and it's finally at its second edition, copying D and D again, but improving upon some aspects and being far more confused upon others. No, honestly, on what I saw, hmm. it's more of um, introducing new things. Yeah, uh, no, it's make, stacking things. Yeah, ma making combat more interesting, making making your action and what you can do with every class more interesting, variety. I mean, it, what... However, it did streamline a lot of the class... What well, streamline change a lot of the classes and races. And luckily, you're um, not... I, I guess... It's uh, not too alien. I, I, I've watched even uh, the Puffins review. And I, this is pretty good too. yeah, I, I, I tend to agree on that it's, it makes for a mo whole more robust experience. If than, you're up for it. Then 5e, 5e mm -hmm. being more streamlined and easy to understand. Mm -hmm. it, look, it's, it's like the vanilla of Cataclysm. <laughs> kind of, kind of, but mm, I wouldn't compare it to well. Of course you can. I'd, I'd compare it to, um, you know, Fallout 3 modding. Oh god. Think about it. Oh, I can feel a bit of the clunkiness of Fallout 3. No, it, it is clunky. It's got a lot of extra padding, but we're gonna get through it, and a lot of it makes sense as to customizability. Because that's, after all, Pathfinder's main draw. You can be really, really specific about how you play a certain class. Like... Oh, a min-maxer's dream. N not min-maxer's, a themer's dream. You can really create something that feels very... Like, no two paladins are going to be perfectly alike. Because you have a lot of feats that modify your class in ways or others. And it's not that much meta-friendly because there's a lot of crap in here. Yeah, well, I've, I've read even about the races and... Mm, yeah, even background, the races are, Background of the... I mean, ancestors of the races yeah, and ancestries. all that. Yeah, ancestries. Even the races are customizable. Which is cool. Yeah, fuck that. <laughs> <laughs> it's cool for me. I mean, again. Oh, it's cool. Yeah. It's cool. It is cool for being customizable. Yeah. I know, but I, I'm fearing that it's gonna be again boiled down to a specific best path. 
which would be sad indeed. But I'm sure some players are going to find it. I'm sure some players have already found it. So uh, we're never going to check N World on this one. Because sure. it's never going to. I mean, this reminds me. You now, back, back when we played superheroes. I was on N World a solid fucking two weeks. Yeah, it, figuring all of the been, game out. <laughs> it was observable. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm hoping that I'll never do it in this game because I don't know, the magic would be lost. Yeah. So let's begin with a bit of an introduction. Hmm? I'm checking the chat from time to time. There's, uh, I think there's like two or three people with us. It's hello, two or three people with us. No, basically. No, actually, before you we... You wanna have it there? Yeah, I just, I just open Twitch, professional stream, like I always. Know, I know. We are ready for every situation. <laughs> just mute your computer. You just you mute your computer and just do harder. They do <laughs> <laughs> Someday we'll look fondly upon this. Nope. Nope. Hmm? Oh! So some people actually really want to see stuff about Pathfinder. Well, we shouldn't keep them waiting. So, like in any... Let's start with the appendix. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, in any in any proper book, I'm looking for this one. The first this, yeah, this section should be in any fucking book to uh, dissuade yeah. assholes in, who want to ruin the game. In, a, in every role-playing book. I, I see one of those even in the rule section that stated that if a rule sounds too good to be true, it is. <laughs> so review it and... Take, and take, stop. Just yeah, get just some help. Take, take not the best outcome because that's not what they wanted. Yeah, yeah. So the first rule of Pathfinder is that this game is yours. Well, you bought it. I'm going to stop right there. Okay. You bought a book. Congratulations. Then I, then I can make my own game. <laughs> <laughs> it's still going to be called Pathfinder. Yeah. We play with Blackjack and Curse. Yep. And no dice. So <laughs> use it to tell the stories you want to tell. Be the character you want to be. And th that's the main emphasis. I mean, come on. Well, I'm guessing yeah. this, this is every role playing book. I mean, be, a, be the character you want to be. We played only war, so I'm going to disagree. I mean, what you are, you are the character you want to be multiple times. <laughs> okay, yeah. You can spin it that way, sure. <laughs> yeah. And share exciting adventures with friends. So we're never going to play it on stream because it has to be with exclusively home <laughs> games. With friends. We are not I don't friends. like me. I am not friend. <laughs> Look, at uh, 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 the stream players, after the stream, we just beat each other up. It's fine. Indiscriminately, by the way, this is 2019. We know how this <laughs> works. <laughs> We're equal opportunity knuckle dusters. Christian stream. Yeah, cause, right. Yeah. Fuck. But for, <laughs> but for the YouTube people, fucking Christian channel too. Oh, uh. All right. Anyway. All right. So yeah. Like in any other do, nation experience. Do whatever you want as long as your group agrees. Yeah. And now. DMs don't abuse this. Players, same thing. No, I mean, it, it stated even in this, and this is the first time yeah, I saw everyone. it. Everyone. Yeah. Everyone. But, you know, as rules, uh, yeah. I use the first book that I've seen it stated to, like, the DM has the last word, so please take that into consideration, players. Yes, it's uh, it's kind of a it's kind of a common sense bias. Yeah, I mean, I've shied away from telling that. Because if you say you're the king, you're no longer the king, yeah. are you? And we both have some some situation in which it had to be stated. Yeah, yeah. So let's see what this uh, actually yeah. contains beyond the introduction, because of course we could mince words here well, a lot, it's, but it's, it's very similar to D and D. It's so, a defining terms. Yeah. Do you know what a feat is? It's a foot, but on the east. Foot, <laughs> leg. Okay, so yeah, indeed, most of the things, uh, the basic terms here, the idea is very close to D&D because &D, it was built on the same open skeleton. So we're going to just skip all of that because examples and everything you yeah. can check out for yourself. And if you need explaining this, well, we can refer you to earlier episodes of The Average Chat where we talk about this in detail. But for now, I guess Eric is the DM in that situation. Eric with a K. What a fucking asshole. <laughs> <laughs> who a the, Chad. Who the fuck? And Liz with a Y. 
both of these people deserve to be fucking neutered. No, those both of these people deserve to be in the country with the same flag as ours. <coughs> Chad. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You, so, you know the the the, the G GDPR is rising up in Chad. Yeah. It's quite successful. Hmm. We should now tell them our exact addresses. <laughs> Maybe they'll send us stuff. By the way, in Chad, right? By the way, <laughs> I finally did find find out our PO details. No. Oh, I inputted them on various uh, accounts that we needed to put them in. Okay, so uh, you can. It's there if you want to use it. I'm, I'm gonna <laughs> make a button. I'm gonna make a button because we want to review your free shit as well. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. But if you want to send oh, us we're something, so not kidding. <laughs> yeah, I know. So if you want to send us stuff, weird stuff, legal stuff, but weird stuff, mostly weird. Just a horse head. Just everything but the horse head. Uh, so the, the rest of the horse. <laughs> the rest of the horse. We're missing the rest of the horse. Wow, we can finally make some... Uh, horse. Some, some, yeah, some minced meat. Salami. Salami, yeah, salami. Right. Anyway, so let's properly we, we, start We with had that crisis the same as Sweden. We did? Yeah. The we just accepted it, my dude. Yeah, yeah. So. Anyway, so um, what this... Um, and you can begin to see the differences almost instantly with uh, character creation and how it works and how you exist in the world, this one's pretty far off. There's only six races. And Here they're called ancestries. And 12 classes. Yep. So, right. But before that, let's see. Is there anything wildly different about... Yeah, yeah. The three actions per, per turn. Yeah. So, you've got the following. A single action, a two action activity, a three action activity, a reaction, and a free action. The in one turn. Yep. No, in, in one turn you have the three actions, the reaction and the free action. Yeah, yeah exactly. So Which is pretty cool. It m makes you kind of think your yeah, and moves ahead a bit more. Yeah, and the, it's not that, that um, open, it's openly streamlined. I mean, mm, when you attack, if you want to attack three times, it's possible. But you don't move, you don't react, you don't do anything. And the second one is minus 5, the third one is minus 10. Which which makes sense for consecutive attacks, like you feel the weight of the weapon, you feel maybe recoil on, okay. you know, yeah. short bows, yeah. on repeaters. Yeah, I have experience to hit you the same for motherfucker. Hmm? Sorry? But I have the experience, the same slice you again and again and... Yeah, you, uh... Yeah, because, you know, mo most of players I attack, so it's an animation. Yeah, no, I, by the way, I hate that, and I think that's one of the problems Pathfinders always solved. Because being so, let's say, bulky in content, in, in a bit of a forced variety sometimes, it forces you to think. It forces you to sometimes overthink, but that brings with itself a lot of description, and it prompts you to describe your shit, because it's so segmented. Because, yeah, in D&D, &D, and especially in 5e, you have this, like, I attack. What do you do? I attack. I attack twice. Your turn. Is it my turn? I want to attack again. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, really. I mean, the, the, and the variety of possible. Even, even by the streamlineness of the game. Because yeah. if you if you declare things rapidly and we all move in yeah, the same... No, it way. makes things faster, indeed. But I think everyone loses a bit of their... A bit. Just a bit, but it, it grates it more and more. The more players are at the table and the more things are happening, the a bit too fast everything gets, you know? It's sometimes. But I, I don't know. know. I, I've, I've seen it a lot that more and more people push from the for the streamlineness, for the faster combat rounds, for the everything like that. Me too, but and I try to fight against it. Yeah, and there are, you know, <coughs> a lot of people are afraid and afraider and afraider of the fact that some players might be offended by something at the table that it oh, happening. That sucks. I mean, I've I've seen talks about uh, removing the natural one. Excuse me, where did you see that? I'm sorry, what? <laughs> the channels. Really? Yeah, the the natural one usually prompts very bad thing to happen. So it shouldn't be there. It's a failure, then it's a failure. I think we should do another disclaimer. Now look. Shit's real, yo. <laughs> In fantasy worlds, shit's real, yo. Uh, the, there's the, the thing I... Um, <laughs> look, uh, yeah. I've read even the rules for rolling that. Mm -hmm. And as I understood, if you roll above with 10 or below with 10, it's critical. Mm -hmm. So Something like that. Now, the thing is, 
like um, the, if if the DC is five and you roll a fifteen, then it's a critical success. Or if so the DC is uh, eleven and you like fifteen and you roll a five, it's a critical yeah, yeah, failure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, we're gonna get to that uh, a bit a bit later. I I think we're gonna get to it today. And if not, we I want to discuss it because combat in this one is very different, and uh, rolling has with itself a lot of more variety in what you can spend your rolls doing. I mean, sure, in this basic section, it's not explained that much early on, but later, there's a lot more actions that you can do in, in, in a turn. A lot more modifiers. A lot more modifiers, yeah, but not actually. Oh, you, you do types have... Types of modifiers. Well, you do have the different... Uh, what is cool, though, it's the ability boosts. Well, yeah, if you're, if you're legendary trained or an expert, then, it, mm -hmm. then you receive different bonuses based yeah. on what you are. Uh, we're going to get to that, too. So let's take characters step by step and deconstruct them and see what's so different about this game. So what they change. You can be. By the way, I is a thing here. It's, a, it's an ability. It's not an ability, these, but it's are... very, very heavy in this universe because mm. there's not so many gods in D&D. Like, there's an overflow of whatever you fucking think it probably is. There's a, a fucking scribe god of the dead that just collects records, but there's also the god of death, which is the cool one, Kelmbor. Well, that depends. Yada, I mean, yada. Yeah, I mean, because... You have too many gods right now in d, &D. Well, you have too many gods because you accept too many gods. <coughs> you have yeah, too many gods because every, every party, every other creator... Has its own set, yeah. I introduces know. gods. I know, but so what the uh, same many gods can be employed here if you want. No, but what I meant is D and D's base settings and throughout its history, D and D has tried and strived to include so much fucking crap. Well, to that be it's overwhelming. well to be more customizable, to be mm, no, but I mean you have a lot of overlap in D and D religion specifically, right? Well, because everyone wants its own, not I because know, it's stated. I guess Greyhawk. If you only play Greyhawk. With the gods from it Greyhawk. should be enough. By and the it's way. enough. It should be well, enough that if you play by those rules. Mm. But if you take Pathfinder and okay, I want to use those gods, it's the same thing. No, but I mean uh, they're very separately uh, determined. There's no overlap here. Well, then don't use the many gods in D and D. Exactly. But I wanted to, you know, highlight a difference. And it was fucking. I I I don't see it as a difference. Many god. Few little god. <laughs> well, if you want that big god to be fewer gods, you can because you're the end. I know, but hey, we don't want to use that one. So, anyway, let's see with the ancestries. Now, the ancestries are the races, the basics of the races, because then you can customize most about your race and make it your own. But. Oh my god. Yeah, no, they look so fucking special. Oh, so the bard is so smug. Hmm? The bard is so smug. Wait for it, man. And the barbarian. You, you <laughs> wait for it, man. They're right. The, the artwork is, as always. <sighs> well, what I've always appreciated are are the goblins in Pathfinder. I know they they're vicious. They're well, vicious is a word for them. Really unique. If you wanna, if you wanna use the PC version, <laughs> special. Yes, thank you. But, I mean, you know, they, they should feel different. If it's only six races at start, oh, yeah. fuck it. Make them stand out. No, but you still have gnomes and halflings. For some fucking reason. <laughs> For some fucking reason. <laughs> you know why? But some halfling... people don't want the hairy feet and some people want the hairy feet. <laughs> yeah, but halflings look Chinese or Eastern. While, gnome, We're gonna find out. while gnomes look uh, more African. We're gonna find out. Okay, sure, sure. I have no idea. Anyway, so what this differs with a lot from DD is um is the fact that your abilities they're not so static. You don't have one proficiency, which applies to everything you know. You know things in tiers. Mm, you might know an ability a lot, be trained, be a martial expert, be a master of that ability. But then again, you might be lacking in a certain other ability that you're trained in. Maybe you didn't commit so much time. Maybe uh, yeah, pro pro proficiency is not static. Exactly, and that creates a more fleshed out character. But some somehow like expertise, but with more layers. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. And there's no one expertise, right? You got yeah. a lot of things, and that makes characters even beyond. Uh, I, I mean, 
sorry, not beyond, before their classes feel different. Because every ancestry here has some base ability boosts and ability flaws, except humans, they're fucking great. Well, because nobody should play them, they are better to, for people to play them. As always. Zero humans. <laughs> All the humans. <laughs> anyway, so, you got dwarves, elves, gnomes, goblin, halflings, and humans. With each with their own flaws and benefits, except humans which have no flaws. Yeah, gnomes have eyebrows the length of blood elves. Like of a full blood elf. A full blood elf. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no. So yeah, uh, some of them look very different than uh, than oh, their D and D counterparts. At which least is the good. the elf looks like the the forty k the forty k the the sigmar elf. Not even the sigmar elf. That's the the more classical, even Tolkien description mm -hmm. of elves. More alien looking. More. Well, why are you going aloof. away now? Because I want to go to the to the races themselves. No. And take them step by step. No. So. Oh my God. Yes, dwarves. Yes, wow. Female, female dwarves has some small beards. Finally. Actually, let me just zoom in on that. Look, it's it's a five o'clock shave. Yeah, no, it is. Wow. <laughs> Fucking wow. Okay. I so. Think someone wrote. Yeah, they did. Yeah, Victor wrote. Fuck you, Victor. Uh, Look, we have this here for a reason. Uh, yeah, you're right. The nat one should not be necessary. Critical failure. Is a nat twenty is not a crit success. Stop being so inclusive, my dude. <laughs> no, but he's right. Not all abilities crit. So that's yeah. that. Well, here it does. No, here crits are a fucking wow. In the first book, in the first edition, crits were described as if you crit, there's gonna be stories about it. Mm. <laughs> I mean. Well, that's uh, that's uh, an incentive. As right I understood, there. if you crit fail, you take double damage if it's a save roll. So yeah, yeah, no, no. It's as much as it rewards you, it also strikes you back. No. So that's a risk reward that D and D maybe is not having so much. It's it's beginning to be a lot more. Well, you could in implement it if you want. You can, but I mean, this offers it by default, and yeah. it's a good change because you feel some. I mean, Pathfinder is always meant to be the overcomplicated cousin who really tries a lot. So, let's find out. Dwarves, in this one, have, let's see. Oh yeah, races have their own hit points. So, if you start out at something, even if you don't have a class, you'll have some hit points allotted. So, when you start out as a dwarf, for example, you get 10 hit points by default. Your speed is 20 feet, not 25, so you really feel that snowness. Your constitution, your wisdom, and another ability of your choice are boosted. But dwarves are not naturally very charismatic, are they? So it's going to be an ability flaw, which you progress even slower. Well, you take a minus or you take a minus per XP? No, well, not per XP, no. Because you don't have that thing. Oh, but when you I mean, yeah, boost them. You can, you can. So, mm, of course, they speak common and dwarven and... You can get additional languages based on your int, if it's positive, of course. Gnomish, Goblin, Goblin, <laughs> Jotun, Orcish, Terran, Undercommon, and any other language which you have access to, such as languages prevalent in your region. This is a good change. I, sp I speak God, thank you. Religious language. No, region, man. Ah, region? Region, okay. I understood religion. <laughs> That's why I made fun of it. I speak Jonah. <laughs> yeah. And the whale. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay. And you count as a dwarf and a humanoid. Because uh, this game focuses way more on traits and tags to um, diversify combat. So, some of your abilities, feats, and stuff will be highly targetable. So, the, this section really no, helps. Th that thing does more damage or the, less damage to, those, to yeah. different tags. And then, what's different from D&D is that every race has very distinct lineages. So, which, by the way, lineages are not just a subtype. They don't just give you starting boosts and minuses and then be done with. They give you access to feats uh, when you level. 
you can get heritage feeds, ancient which customize dwarves. you even more. Yep. So, ancient blooded dwarves are dwarves, dwarves who are more resistant to magic. So they get an ability called Call on Ancient Blood. Which is a reaction. And, and the trigger is when you attempt to save show against a magical effect, but you haven't rolled. You get a plus one to the roll. Yeah. Which is cool for, for a starting thing. You get oh, so just you that one use, edge. You use your trait as an action in combat. Mm. Because it, it costs a reaction to use. Yep. Yep. It adds to everything you have as a trait and as a feat. Most oh, so of them. you don't have that much passives. You have a lot of actives, but you do have passives as well. But there's a lot more overwhelming variety. That's uh, that's a given. Then, oh, the not all. By the way, not all subtypes have yeah, this. That's why you you need to use it before you have rolled. Yeah. Okay. Makes mm -hmm. sense. Yep. Pretty much. So then there's the Death Warden Dwarf, who are Tomb Guardians, and they have a passive on this one. If they roll success on saving throws against necromancy, they get a critical success. So mm. they have the damage. No, they take no damage. No damage? No, on a crit success, they oh, take okay, no okay, damage. Okay. It's different than first. Anyway. Uh, I, no, it's, uh, it's I've read different. a bit about that's it. It's good, it's good. Oh, huh. it's even better. Then there's the Forge Dwarf, which I think like every dwarf is going to choose. Forge Dwarf. Come on, it sounds cool. Adaptation of hot environments. Check this out, check this out. Blazing dust or volcanic that grants you fire resistance, resistance equal to half your, your level. level. And so the, the environmental heat effects as if they were one step less extreme. extreme. Yeah, uh, you do have levels for environmental here. Well, well, I think we did that as well. With uh, if anyone had like fire resistances or st stuff like that, they could go on hotter places. Yeah, but that was mostly descriptive. Here yeah. it has its own mechanic. Yeah. So there's the forge dwarf, which uh, basically is. Um, it was born by a forge in the forge, while Papa Dwarves fucked forges. <laughs> Our superpower is that we can not only say fuck, we can describe it with any <laughs> inanimate object. Oh, come on. Uh, anyway, then there's the Rock Dwarf, oh so my he God, cooled the off. The Rock Dwarf, <laughs> he just okay, cooled okay, off. Take, 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 the, the, take the same image. Just put it outside the forge. No, no, no. So you take the dwarf from the forge, you put him, put him in the bucket next to the forge. He cools off and he becomes a rock dwarf. Get a rock car dwarf. Which you get a plus two bonus S to Ah, circumstance bonus. Yeah, yeah. Oh, finally you have the circumstance yes, bonus. Yes, yes, they, they're, they're back. So you get a plus two circumstance bonus to fortitude reflex against shoving or tripping. Ah. Yep. Because you are rock hard. Yep. You don't move. Yep. And in addition, if uh, anything moves you by 10 feet or more, it moves you only half the distance because same thing. Oh, hey, this is the, this is Flat -footed. the, no, 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 no. This is the, the item from critical from uh, session zero gaming. I mean, yeah, it's one of the items. Yeah. yeah it's one of the items. It's one of the items, but uh, this is the old flat footed. Yeah. Which is cool. Then the final oh, one. And if you're not familiar with circumstance bonuses, basically the DMs way to tell you fuck you. Or, or thank or you. Or thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Mostly fuck you. Mostly fuck you. And then the final one for the dwarf is. Uh, I guess it's what? not used that much because 5e no, 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 de depends a lot on advantages and disadvantages yeah, and no, don't really play off the it's minuses and pluses. too coddled on that point. Because circumstance bonus, by the way, it's not only the DM's job to give them to you, it's your job to keep them in mind, uh, ergo these which are strongly tied to you. Well, yeah, because I I had much exam <laughs> much CC situations that you have like three stacked disadvantages on you, but it's only disadvantage, so you go with it. No, I'm, uh, I'm lowering and hiring the DC for my players. That too, but if you don't know that much, if you are not that reactive, if you don't play that much with the uh, DCs... True that, true that a, a more a more inexperienced DM would be very lost on how to scale difficulty because without, that, without these. And these are really cool flavor that tell you you're kitted or not, specific or not, interestingly different from the situation you're in. And highlights the differences from the players. And the last one, I think, is my favorite. The dwarf with strong blood. The strong-blooded dwarf. 
your blood runs hardy and strong. Your blood has biceps. Yep. <laughs> Basically, you gain poison resistance equal to half of your level. And also, re resistance only lowers the damage with the points of the resistances. Basically, yeah. Nice. And after each successful save against the poison, you reduce two stages of poisoning or one by viral end poison. Basically, poison in this one works on a lot of stages. Not just like the poison condition in D&D, poisons have, you know, slow or fast acting effects. Like Nightshade here really fucking kills you on contact, no save. Okay. <laughs> you know? Well, I've understood. I mean, it puts... Um, it the More emphasis on survival. They, yeah, they they put the conditions over, de over degrees of condition yeah which is which is it's smart it's good it, it yeah. makes you feel like you're well, progressing through an experience as i assumed it makes for a more robust experience it, it does and, and then i but think you have four death saving throws not three no 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 that's and uh, actually no 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 you can go up up and down forever that's, if you yeah, roll yeah, bad yeah 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 that's uh it's one of the things that we face a lot in first yeah, it's not a maximum of four rolls. No, you can just edge death for like half an hour while your party's battling your main villain and you're you're grasping up for dear life. And you're not going to fucking get up like a superhero with a slit throat. You're going to stay there edging for your life until you finally fucking make it or not. And then you got to get up like a superhero with a slit throat. <laughs> but it's going to be earned by like a lot of fucking throws. Because yeah. like in D&D, &D, a nat 20, it's supposed to bring you back. Like no, that. no. No, it's two successes. Like here, a, a crit is yeah, two successes. Yeah, I know, I know. We do two successes, but in the in the default, it gets you back. Yeah, it, it, like okay. Fine. And you then know? and the net one is just two failures. Yeah, it's a bias for the players. Mm. A lot. Uh, I mean, fifth E has a lot of biases for the players. Well, it's which more, is good. It's, it's more popular for that reason. Yeah, yeah, it is. It is very mainstream. But this one, again, like you said, meteor experience. And then you've got the thing that actually is the meat of character. The uh, fits? Yeah. So of character customization. Every four level. Oh, okay. Every so it, fourth it level. It fits given by the race. And then you've had feats given by the class to customize your class. Every fourth level you get like two feats. One for the race, it's, one from the class. It's uh, it's pe uh, it's uh, or you odd and even levels. And ah. you pick from uh, pools at each level. For example, uh, it's the first level pool. Oh my pool. god, Boulder Road. <laughs> it's a lot of things. It's a lot of things. Yeah, you can make it do a lot of things. Like if you're... Uh, Special, your GM can add the appropriate creature traits to the ancestral foes list. Nice. Yeah. Or you can just roll. If you are a rock runner. You know, if you have rock runner. Yeah. You ignore difficult terrain. You, it's That's a lot of things. Well, it depends on... So, you nice. get feats at uh, first level. Fifth. You gain one. Then you get at fifth, at ninth, at thirteenth, and seventeenth levels. As a dwarf, you select from among... A list which is right next to your... My god, there's a lot of them. So it's about three feet per level? Ranging two, three, four. And uh, at first level has more, so that it, you really feel it's special. Still, uh, the level still caps at 20, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you can still multi-class. Or, or, or you have, uh, uh, what's it called? Epic levels, gestalt. Epic levels, gestalt. That's I've read something about gestalt in the book, though. Yeah, well, every uh, even D and D mentions this. You can have it as a vandal, but uh, it's not in the defaults anywhere because it's ludicrously overpowered. I mean, come on. No, oh, I've read in this book. Yeah, no, 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 no. Like, every uh, every main book no, states has, it. Even has, the DMG. Has, has the and, yeah, it has it as a very niche variant option. Well, you could. But go, it has it. You could go with your revenge. You could go if you if you want a real high power campaign. Yeah. Fucking yes. Anyway. Time for the players to be gods. Yes. Else. I'd do it in a Greek uh, demigod setting, though. Okay. Gestalt. I'd do no. it there. I'm kind of tempted to do it there. With no. either system. Oh, my, my elves fa My here. favorite. Yeah, elves. yeah. These are your favorites. By the way, you, you even have like more detailed physical descriptions. Yeah, I've, I'm reading this right now. Mm -hmm. Worry so that you privately here... look down on them. Yeah. Feel like I'm contesting and El Elf, uh, elves here are really onto the fae-like aspect. 
and and the, the grace, they, the they, finesse, they look, the symmetry. They look kind of Greek, though. But what? The clothing? A bit, yeah. The clothing. Nah, everything looks kind of um, exotic here. Mm. It's the art style of the dudes. But um, I mean, the elven design. This one is a bit different. They look more alien. They look more fade. They look more overly symmetrical. You can see it, right? Yeah. Yeah. And it's uh, it's oh, they are they are refugees. Mm, in some settings, in this one, in the base setting of this one, yeah, because there's few elves left. Mm. Elven natality is not that big because uh, their lifespan is that big. I mean, check this out. Even in this one, uh, where was it? So, mm. elves uh, don't live a thousand years, no, but they do live 600. 600. Everything in Pathfinder is a bit shortened uh, in lifespans. It wants to be grittier like that, but it doesn't always uh, add up or match up. But it works. It makes uh, everything feel a bit more high stakes when you're dealing with... By the way, the base uh, Pathfinder setting is always Kingmaker, which halfway around the game surprises all parties and turns into a political game. So you kind of see where that's a, a bit discrepant, right? And then uh, This time it, you start with six hit points. Yeah, you start with six. Make sure you can take this one. So a uh, 30 feet speed, dexterity intelligence, and another one. Mm -hmm. Your flaw is constitution because elves are frail. Yeah. Common elven and another religious language. <laughs> oh wow! You get null gnomish. Ah, yeah, celestial draconic null gnomish goblin orcish sylvian, and other. And uh, orthodox. <laughs> Yeah, you have low light vision, so it's not that. Oh no, it's still dark. Vi it's not. No, you Dwarves still you, have you, dark you, you still have the dark vision, but now you have even the low light vision. No, no check it out. No, different. no, no. You, they, that's what I'm saying. Oh, that okay. you still have the dark vision thing, but now it adds up with the low light vision. Yeah, pretty much. Okay. And then you got the your heritage. heritages, <laughs> which these ones are are. are it can be a more thematic than be 50. an Arctic elf, a cavern. Well, these are races in 50. Yeah, it's not well, sub races. So, but they are like, sub, sub races. Actually. There are sub races, but they they lean heavily into the sub races here. Yeah, this feels like a sub race in the end. No, it is, it is, it is. Yeah, but in the end, it feels like a race. Yeah, in the end, it feels a bit too separated. Yeah. By the way, you're going to have a fucking field day when you reach human because all of the half oddities are slotted there. Ah. That's can it, can I be a half goblin? Nah. Oh, come on. I want half of me to be this big while the other half is like here. <laughs> yeah, and the head is something like that. Okay. It's concave too. Yeah. Anyway. Arctic elf. Yes. So ah, resistance to cold. Yeah. Cavern elf have dark vision. This is basically uh, what the forge dwarf was, but with ice and elf. Yeah. So that they're completely opposite. And then... You have the seer elf, while well, you see the future. No, wait, you, you got a cavern elf first. Yeah, cavern elf that gives dark vision. Uh -huh. The seer elf that you see the future and again plus on a circumstantial bonus to identify magic and decipher writings. Yeah, pretty much. And you can cast detect magic entry. Oh, it's a cantrip now. Yeah, it is. It is as it should be, to be honest. Like. Whisper elf. Yeah, long ears. As now. long as you can hear normally, you can use seek action. Yeah. We're, we're we're gonna get into the yeah. the action variety later. Well, it's this. I mean, it's the same thing as a player saying that I want to see something. No, no, it's actively searching for it. Yeah, it's a perception check, combined with a survival tracking. Yeah, but still, yeah, yeah it's kind of the same. Hmm. So in a sixty foot cone inst instead of a thirty foot cone. Mm -hmm. Ah, so it depends on how far you can see. Yeah, pretty much. You are so no, no, here, here. Yeah, in, in the seek action. Mm -hmm. Yeah, dif different from the game, from D&D. &D. Mm -hmm. You also gain a plus two to locate undetected creatures. Okay, and the wood elf. Woodland. Yeah, the elves that I don't like. <laughs> Why is that? I really don't like wood elves, e even in D&D. &D. I don't know, they just feel weird. They feel like Scoyotel. I don't really like Scoyatel. Well, that tainted most wood elves. I mean, come on, Legolas is a wood elf. He's pretty fucking cool by base. Yeah, the Legolas, Lego Legolas, but... But he is? Yeah, but you don't cool. see him as a wood elf. You really don't see him as a wood elf. He's depicted, he's, he's stated. I mean, it well, depends again, on the cultural bias of yeah. what you consider a wood elf. Yeah, again... For me, he's the basis of wood elves. 
uh, again, I see Wood Elves as Quiet Hill. So that's why I don't really like the Wood Elf aspect. Because Quiet Elves are assholes? And they live in trees while they have a perfectly functional city. Like, they just... Yeah, because Squiatels specifically are assholes. Yeah. I mean, if you're assholes, so be, at least be fancy assholes. Oh, check this shit out. You can take cover. Oh, yeah, I've read about this. You uh -huh. spend an action to take cover. You don't actually automatically have cover. So you don't glue the chest high walls. Oh, my God. The ND 5th edition is a third person shooter. Yes, it is. Oh, and, and the game. I'm angry now. Uh, the, the, the same thing with shields. You what? have you have an action to raise up shields, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. so your AC fully protected. By no, no, the no, shield. not fully protected. Your AC actually I know, it's, I know, it's increased. I know. It's good. It's good. It makes sense. It makes fighters more tactical. But yeah, default. you have options. <laughs> you just uh, you don't just stay there and hit. It's D and D with sub menus with extra steps. Look, I see it as a top down. It's masturbating with no. different types of gloves. <laughs> Look, I see it as a top down RPG from the 90s when you have to select everything you use, which I like. Yeah. <laughs> I like the feel of that, and you have to think about everything you have. While I see DD a bit more like. Gears of War. Legion. Yeah, okay. That too. It's not bad. It's certainly good, but it's streamlined. Yeah. As long as it doesn't get to be a clicker. I know you, combat heavy RP low DMs. Combat heavy RP low DMs? Yeah. That's, That's when bad. you turn it into a clicker. If there's only combat, RP ah. is kept at a minimum, you know. Okay, okay, okay. Well, it depends on the situation. You That's... can reach there with the players if they that's where they push. That's what ties me back to uh, memories of... Cat vomit stained rugs and dusty rooms, which I want D&D to grow out of. Yeah, but I mean, if the situation is like that, and you have a few sessions of only combat. Uh, no, 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 I mean, of only I, no, I didn't mean sessions, I meant campaigns. I mean, DMs oh, could, could, behaving like that. Campaigns you know. with only combat? Well, I see players that want that. I, I've met a lot of players that doesn't really want RP. And Go they, play only war. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's just, Go play only one. Well, it de depends on the player. If that's what they like. I mean, as a DM, you kind of have to cater to everyone at the table. But at the same time, your players should know what they're getting into. With you as a DM, they should accept certain biases. While you should accept certain biases, there's this well, yeah, unwritten contract. Or you can even make a written contract. Look, this is yeah. what I want. Before the games, all of the people at the table should talk about what exactly. the game would exactly. be. What were we talking about? What else next? Ancestry feats. They've ha they got they got some. I, you can have elf step twice. You move in a graceful dance, <laughs> and even your steps are broad. You step five feet twice. You chimmy and then changa <laughs> at ninth <laughs> level. I see it. Okay, you in this game also have gnomes, which are tinkerers, which are not little shits and fucking stupid anymore. They got eight hit points. Wait, what? They got eight hit points like the elves. More than the elves. More than the elves. Huh. Now elves are frail here. Where their ability flow is strength, not constitution. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fair, fair. Their size is small. They got 25 feet, though. Not like the dwarf who's got 20. So they are a bit small. taller than dwarves. No, speed, man. Size, small. No, dwarves are medium. Yeah, but dwarves has less speed. No, they're just... Tippy tapping more during a combat round. Oh, and doors are just uh, tanking their way. Yeah, but uh, gnomes are fast. <laughs> I'm disgusted. <laughs> <laughs> fast. I also like my jokes. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, but uh, did you see the blue gnome just going? No, I did. I don't want to see amazing. the blue gnome. So, the blue gnome. Right, they got ability boost in constitution, charisma, and free. Another third free one. And yeah, it's uh, strength is their ability flaw. They got common gnomish sylvan by default. No, I know, thank you. <laughs> and then, of course, uh, the smarter you are, you get to choose from draconic, dwarven, elven, goblin, yodin, orcish, the and fuck is yada yada. Yodin? You know, giant. Oh. But sounding like cool. That giant. Fuck me, look at the sample names. 
Ab Abrostor. Abrostor. Best or Abrostor. Look, easy. Bef. Fajit. Ah, Besh. Bef, Fajit, Niji. It's not Zesh. Oh my fucking god. Neji. The only way that you can play Naruto Who? in Pathfinder is if you're ha. small. Or, or, you know, pie. Straw. <laughs> Name's fucking Straw. Anyway. Rosette so, Kohlmeier. So, the gnome shortages are Chameleon Gnome. Oh, God. Who can shift the color of their skin and hair. Possibly due to latent magic. Okay. Okay. I you hate, go. You I, go. I hate gnomes now. <laughs> Look, I, I picture a gnome with the head of a pookie pookie. Stop. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> anyway, uh, it grants you plus two circumstantial bonus to stealth, so it's not that much. You're an active camo cloak. But slightly fucking stupid. Next one, the fate touched gnome. I mean, it's it's stupider than the, than the fate touched gnome. Okay, I hate gnomes even more. I mean, the first one, okay, is like retarded. The fate touched gnome. You choose a cantrip from the prop. Oh, ah, by the way. Uh, here spells are in categories, so we're gonna get to it. Ah, schools. To it. Mm, no. Well, I see that the primal. No, because uh, they're list. they're also in in schools. If you want to combine spells, like the wizard does here. By the way, the wizard and sorcerer here are are, are wildly different. Okay. From uh, from D &D. Uh, they both got spell sculpting options and meta magic options. Meta magic functions differently. You can combo some spells together into the same main action. It's fucking crazy. So uh, here, spell categories are not what schools are because there's uh, far less of them, but they're far more impactful. Here, magic feels snappy. It feels strong. It feels out of control. Okay. Also, you can combo spells together in the same action. I mean, come on. Do you want an ice fire knife? You can get an ice fire knife. I mean. Do you want I, slow haste? I want. You can get slow haste. <laughs> I want the triple blight. <laughs> you can with uh, heightened, extended, and a new meta magic from this one doubled. Okay. Anyway, so um, the fate touch no. Yeah, a you can cast. Uh, oh, it's a ca okay. So you oh, get so it's like the high. Trip. It's the, it's a high elf yeah. from D and D. And you can change the cantrip to different one in the same list once per day by meditating to re realign yourself with the first world, which is uh, by the way the phase uh, origin here in this one. Mm. 10 minutes. Okay. So 10 minutes is a short rest? No, it's a meditation. Oh, okay. Sensate gnome. What? They feel... They, they, they look, look, you see all colors brighter, hear all sounds is richer. <laughs> and smell better. Okay. So basically, so you gain a gnomes, special sense. They are gnomes deprived of social conduct. Yeah, they're very touchy feeling. <laughs> <laughs> they're huggies. <laughs> oh my god, this is worse than the than, than the ghost gnome from D and D. Oh, 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 hold on, you got that one. Oh god, the umbral gnome. <laughs> so, 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 so. Uh, you get a special. You get as a gnome, you get a fucking sixth sense, an imprecise scent with a range of thirty feet. Means you can use your sense of smell to determine the exact location of a creature. Oh, so your imprecise you your Im imprecise uh, sense turns into a precise. No, no, not sense, scent, imprecise scent. Well, no, that it's given by a sense. No, basically. So you can smell footprints. Oh my God! You are. You have witcher senses. With a gnome. Yes. Okay, I hate gnomes. In addition, you get a plus two circumstance bonus to perception checks whenever you're trying to locate an undetected creature within the range of your scent. Pa -pa -pa. Umbral, Umbral gnome. gnome! You're edgy. A you connection gain dark to vision. dark sh or shadowy fae from the underground of the Emerald Nightmare. You gain dark vision. Yep. Okay, you gain dark vision. Wellspring gnome! You just, you are born from a spring. Just yeah, pretty much. You can cast spells and innate spells. Whoa. Oh, oh, oh. 
So you get uh, this connection like, might come from an occult prayer on a nature occult song, a deity, celestial or fiend, magical affront left behind by a mage. So yeah, you you are born next to or in close proximity or due to. So you are somehow the tiefling. Ish, no. Not somehow. Really. Well, your eyebrows being this big must have come from somewhere. Oh, you got triple eyebrows. Fuck you. Yes, you get triple fucking eyebrows. <laughs> And eyes so close together that the nose bridge is just skin. Amazing. Wow. Vivacious conduit. Fuck. Suck my cunt. <laughs> anyway. So. Goblin. Before I, I was thinking we could take a small break here. We could take a small break, be, break before we go to. It's like, I want to see what they fucking did with the goblin. Because the end. Oh, God, that face. Yes. Ooh. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> so, by the way, just to preface this. At least I was very disappointed. I'm not disappointed by bo- most goblinoids. I love uh, hobgoblins. I love black bears. But I fucking hate what they did to goblins in 5th edition. They're so useless. Goblins should be little shits. Vicious mucuses on the palms of adventurers that burn to the touch. Burn when they piss. Piss when they burn. Not on Acquisitions Incorporated. Really? They turn goblins in a new race that are basically elves of goblins. Oh, I saw that shit. No, 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 no. I mean actual fantasy goblins who build everything with spit and other bodily fluids and repair cars like we Look, repair social Look, as a goblin, status. you should have the race ability to make poison out of your shit and piss. And if not, you can work it out with your DM. But... We're going to talk about goblin shit and piss right after the break. Oh, it's it's nine already. I know. Come on, it's a quiz. Oh, God. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Goblins. Goblins. So, welcome back. We had a bit of an extended break, but I'm sure you're used to that by now. Our elevator music has seeped into your soul, and you're ours forever. Submit, humans. Goblins. Goblins. <laughs> so, this one, as opposed to D&D, goblins are not weak little shits. What did they roll? Um, elevator music. That's why I said it. No. <laughs> it's fine. Yeah, look, we should upgrade to some more... Mm, appropriate music, but we don't thing is, we're <laughs> dirt poor. We don't have the money for royalties, yeah. and we want to buy royalties, right? Mm, in fact, you can help us do that. I won't be shameless, but I'll be suggestive. <laughs> so, goblin. As goblins, well, you're you vicious. Eat, you eat pickles. No, but you eat <laughs> pickles. Goblins reach adolescence by the age of three, and adulthood 45 years later. Fucking love this. They live 50 years or more, but um, few live past 20. Well, yeah. Goblins have six hit points, just like elves. Who's Velma? Six hit points like elves. Yeah. I'm starting they're, to. They're small. Elves they got 25 bad. feet. And they get ability boosts in dexterity, charisma, and another one. What the fuck? Excuse me? No. I don't know. Okay. And their ability flaw is wisdom. <laughs> they speak common goblin and, or whatever, draconic, dwarven, gnoll, gnomish, halfling, orcish, and any other language. Bam. Right. They got dark vision. Oh. Yeah, yeah. The little shit. And, for example, your average uh, name for a goblin might be Ak Brocker from Guzmuck, Krabby, Lohi, My favorite Masmord, is, my favorite is Tup. Tup. <laughs> Tup. So, no, Yonk. Rickle. No, no. Yonk. <laughs> we found the third proverbial verb. Yoink. It's yeet, yoink, and yonk. Where you just tear something apart from the inside, right? Yeah. Uh, come on, surprise me. Oh, okay, please. Sure. <laughs> 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 me, man. All right. So, 
you can be several types of heritages which range from the Charhide Goblin, which uh, basically have fire resistance. Flat wow. checks, however, to res uh, so they're fire retardant. Retarded. They're fire retarded, yeah. Uh, they have an easier time being doused from uh, being flamed. Okay. Uh, the DC, for example, for persistent fire damage is 10 instead of 15. Mm -hmm. Which is reduced to 5 if another creature's you, uh, creature uses an appropriate action to help. Like, you know, spit on you. <laughs> oh, I've, I've seen about the help action being Yeah, a the help action is uh, a, a, a bigger thing here. It's a bit more versatile and it's a bit more descriptive, like uh, based on what you do. Yeah, the DC does indeed lower or higher. Yeah, and you spend an action or reaction doing that. Mm -hmm. Not just... You helping exist. for advantage. Yeah, yeah, no, you you actually actively are involved in that. And it's pretty cool. Yep. And then you've got the Iron Gut Goblin who can eat spoiled fucking food. <laughs> you can eat and drink things when you're sickened as opposed to most races who can't, you know, down something yep. when they're about to vomit. You can, though. And then vomit all and of it. And you can keep yourself fed with poor meals without using the subsist downtime activity so you live on designated shitting streets can can he can he eat his own feces probably nice no probably you gain a plus two bonus to saving throws against afflictions against sickened and to remove sickened and when you roll a success it's a critical success so yes you can basically eat your own shit very very nicely wow all of these benefits apply only when the affliction or condition resulted from something you ingested. So yes, it is specifically your tooled to, to eat, eat your, your own shit. shit. <laughs> <laughs> then there's the razor tooth goblin who uh, gain jaw Who's attacks. Bitey. Yeah, who bite for 1d6 piercing. Your jaws are in the brawling group and they have the finesse and unarmed traits. Wow. It's very fucking specific. That's what I love about it. Yeah, you can uh, bite with your dexterity, not your strength. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Excuse me, <laughs> governor. <laughs> governor. Anyway, you get the snow goblin. Guess what? Resistance to cold. It's exactly like the snow elf. I know, I know. I keep seeing the things. No, elves have it pretty bad, and every other race is good at what elves does. <laughs> Finally, something that puts you on our level and no. beats you down with, with experience. No. Anyway. Then the Unbreakable Goblin gains 10 hit points instead of 6. <laughs> and when they fall, they get half damage. Wow. It's dense. <laughs> it's just <laughs> dense. All right. Oh, man. And they're, by the way, their uh, their feats are, are specifically fucking crazy. Like, you get the... At fifth level, for example, you get Goblin Weapon Frenzy. When you score a crit, you get specialization effect indifferent of the weapon. So, like, no, every weapon... Every weapon, is. when you use it uh, properly with training and mastery and all that, can do something better, can do something extra. Goblins can do that at fifth level just because they're fucking batshit crazy. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And then, for example, at uh, oh, and the sneaky perk is uh, for example, <clears throat> you're not gonna believe this, right? It's called uh, very sneaky, <laughs> and then check the shit out at 13th very, level, very, very, very sneaky. <laughs> Prerequisite, very Whoa, sneaky. Uh, uh, a very, very sneaky goblin can can... can sneak without cover. Huh. So he can. He can, he can crouch in Van. the middle of a room. And vanish. Fucking neat. I mean, yonk. Yeah, fuck them. <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm gonna make yonk the rogue. Okay. Wait, hold on. Actually, you know what? For, by the way, for when we're done with this, uh, with this in depth, we're gonna make two characters. And they're gonna, you know, I'm stating mine right now. It's gonna be yonk, the iron gut rogue. Okay. I'm gonna try to make a wizard. I guess it's gonna be a, I a halfling. A halfling wizard because it's. Oh, by the way, by the way. So you ready? You ready? Okay, okay, good. Right. 
Harry Yarbrough fit. Yarbrough looks Come nice. On. Harry fit. Fucking boom. Yep, Harry fit. Like, it's like happening bad. should be. It's, yeah, so in, in 50, they shaved them here. Fucking didn't. Whoa, whoa, look at that tuft. But I really like the Eastern look, though. Yeah, it's it's appropriate somehow for this. Even the triangular chin and everything. The face is mismatched as fuck. Look at this shit. And the ears, they're finally not pointy. They're round. They look like beans. <laughs> beanies. Beanies. Yeah. So let's find out what they, they do. They like beanies. And look, another elf. <laughs> another elf with six hit points. <laughs> but with any fight speed. Yeah. Dexterity wisdom, strength as a flaw. They can learn. Dwarven, Elven, Namish, and Goblin. Mm -hmm. So small races, no small languages. You got it, you got it. Names as uh, Anfa. Oh, and you get a... Antal. You get an actually cool uh, thing. He nice. <coughs> you gain a plus two circumcision bonus when using the Seek action. Yeah, you see better. Mm -hmm. You have the Elven eyes. <laughs> Yamira. Your PDIC. Yamira. Lynn, Amara, America, Rilla. Bless you. You can be a blown by wind halfling or no, a gusty no, wild halfling. No. Sistra! Sistra. Miro. Oh boy. Ontol. Ontol. So, you can be a gusty halfling. Gutsy. Gutsy halfling. Your family line is known for keeping a level head, staving up fear. Oh. <laughs> yep. When you roll a success on a saving throw, yep. against the emotional effect to get the critical success. <laughs> Take against fucking crying. Yeah. No, I'm not. Oh, you're the brave little fucking shit. A Hillock halfling, you are literally Frodo. Yeah. Accustomed to calm life oh, in the fuck hills. What the fuck is that? You're Samwise. Frodo cries yeah, all yeah, the fucking time. Yeah, Frodo's a bitch. <laughs> you're Sam. Your people find rest and relaxation, especially replenishing. Oh, when anyone uses the medicine skill to treat your wounds, you can eat a snack to add your level <laughs> to the hit points you regain. <laughs> so you eat have a they, sandwich. Have they ever heard of second breakfast? <laughs> These people go, oh my god. Oh my god, the this. nomadic halfling. Your ancestors have traveled from the okay. You gain two additional languages. Nice. And when you, oh, you get a multilingual feat. Multilingual, you gain another new language. When you get the multilingual fit, multilingual fit, no. you get a new language. You know what I do? Mm. Uh, Just so this, make him know every language. This as a wizard with high end. And fucking mm, all and the words. all he knows is spells to help fucking translate. Okay. <laughs> Think about it. Because it's viable here. In D&D, &D, it's far more combat oriented. But in here, you can be you can be like yeah. a highly specialized in a this Twilight dumb shit. Halfling. <laughs> Fuck me. Oh, no, it's okay. Your ancestor has performed many secret acts under the concealing cover of dusk. Like orgies. No, 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 no. Think about it. You know, uh, the, the Romanian staple of Nana, Shitsatsa? No. No, you came from a family of thieves. Or bickerers. Yeah. Whether for good or ill. <laughs> yeah, it's cool. You gain low light vision. That's it. Or wild wood halfling. Woo! You ignore difficult terrain from trees, foliage, and undergrowth. You're a parkour dwarf. Only for trees, foliage, and, <laughs> and undergrowth. Woo! You can jump over in dandelions. You jump good. You jump over dandelions. But good. <laughs> Elsa's free fees. Yeah, yeah, see, a so. lot of shit. Halloween lore. Half they got oh god, the halfling yeah, luck. Of course, of course, of course. But they do have. My favorite one, by the way, it's a carryover from the first edition. I had the Titan Slinger. Yeah, you know why? Because it's basically just slingshots that yeah, halflings I, are particularly I, good at. Yeah, I've heard something. There are two specialized weapons that halfling and gnomes have their own slings. Slings are one of them. Yeah. When you hit an attack with a sling against a larger, larger creature, increase the size of the weapon damage die by one die. No. Okay. So you are killing Goliath every turn. Yep. Halfling luck. Cultural adaptability. Oh, so you got luck upgrades. Oh Look my at god, this, this is... Unit. Yeah, this is a Lannister. Exactly <laughs> a Lannister. <laughs> Tyrion Lannister. Yes. And the, the, the fancy fucking hair. Guiding you luck. You gotta respect that shit. Yeah, guiding luck. 
irrepressible hmm. Halfling weapon expertise yeah. yeah, wait, look, you're your favorite ah. homon Ah, yes So, homos, <laughs> humans <laughs> So they look Byzantine as the, fuck. Now the poster boy for this, yeah, it looks premium, right? Got fucking sunglasses. It looks like how I imagine a Dragon Ball to look. As a tire? Yeah, as a tire. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, Prince of Persia, how you doing? A bit, a bit. With hey, with you know, pointy I love, shoes. I love the details on the shoes. They feel like actual leather. You can see that shit. Yeah, the pointy shoes. I like it. Anyway, so humans in this one. They're either humans, like actual humans with, you know, or, eight or, head points, medium <laughs> size, 25 feet, or and half. two free ability boosts. That's it. And they speak common and then have fun. But... Oh, anything. But their wow. subtypes are not like the others. They're ethnicities. So, get half elves, half orcs, and then, here's how it works. Oh, just half elf and half orcs. Half elf and half orcs are sub varieties of it. But either way, the human heritages they function like this: the half elf, you can select elf, half elf, and human feats when you gain ancestry feats. So you get access to three uh, feat pools okay. for variety. For the half orc, you gain the orc trait of low light, uh, the orc trait and low light vision. In addition. You can select orc, half orc, and human feats whenever you're getting ancestry. Okay, so humans are overpowered. <laughs> you get the skilled heritage, which gives you an extra skill, and you become an expert in it by level five. And the versatile heritage, which uh, you can select the general feat of your choice at any point during cat creation. And then, my god, they got a lot of fucking skills. Not that many, actually. Wait a minute. Huh. What do you know? No, no, definitely. Wow. No, you, you fucking go. Where is the orc skills? Well, this is not orcs. This is humans. This is the half orc skills. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, You're you right. can... Wait, go back. Go, go up. Go up. Go up. Up, up, up. This is the half orc. Go up. Upper. Just go. This is the half elven. No, it's the human ancestry fits. Yeah. But then the others... Well, uh, the, where is the half elf one? It's probably... I mean, let me check. Because it's the last thing we're going to talk about today, right? Let me see the... The list. Of table of contents, right? Ba -da 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 -da. Feats. Feats are their own section at ah. page 254. And you know what? As a last thing, let's check it out to see how overpowered they made humans. 254. Better... Almost, almost. Mm. Too much? A bit. Mm -hmm. How about now? Alright, we're, we're good enough. 262. It's just... Yeah. There we go. Oh, okay, so you get... Uh, Medicine feats, nurture feats, prerequisites. So, uh, feats, as a last thing uh, that you're going to encounter a lot in this game are slotted into categories and we're going to talk about them in detail in another one because they deserve their own fucking episode but oh these are feats beyond your yeah race feats but you can select some of those even with your race so well yeah the prerequisites mm -hmm. so you got thievery uh in inverse order thievery skill feats survival self oh so skill feats and then non uh, general skill feats and then non skill feats and then general feats yeah oh my god and then they are in detail my god they're so detailed that's what i love about this because you can make whatever the fuck you want <laughs> fucking posture and eyes oh my god <laughs> i kind of halfway see malady well yeah but it's like finger thin it's so bad Oh, is, is she smelling the sword? Yes. Oh my god, that look. Yes, you, wow. Wow. No, okay. So, we're going to end things here oh for tonight god. because we just received our dose. <laughs> our full <laughs> dose. That's it. Yeah. But, uh, oh, they, so. They write something. Oh. Wrote something. Food helps with all problems, indeed. And we're about to go get some because we're tired. Oh, we're hungry. Okay. We're lonely. 
So, because we're so lonely, do remember, we've got a Discord and we'd love to hear from you right there. Yep, and this week we've done uh, races. I yep. guess next, next week, week we're gonna classes. do classes. And the next week we're gonna try Grass to... Grass our asses! Yeah, try to create a character. No, I think next week we're gonna do feats. The third week should be feats because there's so many things there. Yeah, but feats are highly customizable and you should search <laughs> for them when you have something. Okay, we, fair we, enough, we, fair we, enough. We could a bit just try to, when we make the character, like look, go into feats as well. Go okay, into feats okay. as well. And how about this? So next week there's classes, third week there's some character creation in which, you know what, we could invite some other friends. No, oh, make characters. Yeah, and make and characters. Then, and you're finally going to force ourselves into trying this game. And the fourth week, I can DM a one yeah, shot Yeah, you can force you. ourselves <laughs> to try this game. Okay, oh, I see on, where this is on, going. Come on, what do you think? It should work. To finally not, not be lonely on Thursdays. Clip this. We're going to make some friends. <laughs> Construct them out of magic. But uh, I haven't said this in a while. I think it's my turn. So What? Oh, don't be you. shameless. No, but you can, because we're about to fuck off. In case you're just joining now, we're about to fuck off. But you can find us on the YouTubes. Yeah. When we upload about 12 hours later than this episode uh, ends. Go, go a bit more, about 24. Right, with all of the editing and stuff. Okay, because we take out the breaks. We take out everything that could get us flagged for stupid reasons. I'm sorry, you do, but you do need to get better at this. We've been copy strikes a few times. Like three times, I think. Yeah. For 10 second implements where our royalty free soundtrack was uh, audible and we didn't talk. It's fucking amazing. Look, we're not mainly YouTubers, but if and when we're going to transition, this shit needs to change. Well, we're not, we upload everything on YouTube, but the YouTube is kind of lonely. It is, it we is, have, it is. So we have a few people there. Maybe you can join. Yeah, let's say you. And they wrote again. Yeah. Bye. Now, yeah, bye. <laughs> bye. With that, indeed, bye. All of our social medias are down there, and do please talk to us because we're very lonely here in Eastern Romania. We try not to be peasants, and with your help. But we're in Western Romania. With your help. <laughs> with your help. We might just make friends. So, Have a good night. So don't forget to check us on YouTube again. And uh, see you on Mondays for the reroll. And on Tuesdays for the main campaign that this week will happen.